Welcome to the tall, fall, tall, fall turf festival at Gulfstream Park West. Brown Nicoletti along with Katie Stazak. Beautiful day here in South Florida. Nice and warm. We got a fast main track, got a firm turf course. We got one carryover we want to tell you about, and that is in the Rainbow Six. And we have an eight race car today, so please be advised it starts in race number three, and it's about $16,000. So they'll be betting that today. And with an eight race car, we do not have the early uh, pick five this afternoon, but we certainly have the late one and a uh, couple of pick fours throughout the afternoon. Lots of fun wages, and of course, the ever popular new rolling. Uh, Super, Super high, high fives five. in every race. Every race, at, at least every race that we have at least seven runners in the field, there will be a rolling super high five, and that bet has certainly become a force here during the Fall Turf Festival, and I'm sure we'll see it continue on to the championship meeting in December at Gulfstream. Just really exciting. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and some of them pay all amazingly. And once they get up to the carryover, boom, they slam it. So, uh, as I mentioned, a fast main track, a firm turf course. Before we uh, get into today's card, Wednesday's eight race card. Let's see what's tweeting around the world today about horse racing. And one of them is, of course, the big story, American Pharaoh, heading off to his new career. All his connections met him over at Coolmore's Ashford Stud. He arrived safe and sound. Very cool. He had a police escort for one. Since he is racing's first Grand Slam winner, he has moved into Grand Slam's old <laughs> stall. And his new paddock buddy is Thunder Gulch, who is going to be in the paddock next to him. He's known as the babysitter, so going <laughs> to help him get settled in. And, of course, we're all looking forward to seeing him. At, well, seeing really baby pharaohs making it onto the racetrack. Yeah, today. just a couple of years away, and uh, I'm sure there'll be so much excitement about that. Another uh, one we want to talk about, horse, uh, Stephanie's kitten, who, uh, well, the story changed a little bit since uh, we had this uh, tweet uh, posted. Stephanie's kitten r and aid at the Keeneland November sale. So Ken and Sarah Ramsey said, we are going to keep her and breed her herself. So I thought. I was very <laughs> excited about this. Ken Ramsey the next day actually ended up selling Stephanie's kitten for $2.8 million. And she is now going to be a broodmare in Japan. So there goes my hopes of hopefully <laughs> visiting her. But, of course, I'll be looking forward to seeing her foals in the races someday. Well, a nice shot of on a coat here. This is such a fabulous picture. We're going to hopefully, there we go, honor code standing in front of the statue of AP Indy, his sire. He, of course, has settled in at Lane's End where he's going to begin his stallion career. I love this photograph. Honor code just really a, a spitting image of AP Indy, really. And now, of course, AP Indy is pensioned and he's going to hopefully carry on his uh, very prominent father's legacy. One of my favorite horses on a code. He uh, would come from the clouds. He got third in the uh, classic behind American Pharaoh, so went out on a, a high note. Uh, let's go to the Wednesday card. Our first race on the turf. As we mentioned, the turf course is firm. It's a maiden claiming event for Phillies two-year-olds. And we do have one jockey changing here on the number four. Make the rudder, Antonio Gallardo. And a horse I did not use, and I went back when I saw you had a video of it. I said, why didn't I use this horse? I still haven't figured it out. Explain <laughs> why, and that's the number one horse that day, Queen's de Salamo. Well, I really loved, this is the career debut for Queen de Salamo, and I really loved the way that she came on late in this race, which was going 5 ace. She's stretching out to a mile today. When I see Leroy de Salamo's at a mile on the grass, you know it's a perfect fit, and I think her running style is going to suit that as well. Again, this is her career debut, showing a little bit of greenness, wanting to drift in there, but I really like the way that she closed. She finished second, only beaten a length and a quarter, now going to stretch out off that promising debut effort gets Lasix added for the first time for Jose Pinchin. I thought this was an excellent spot for her. Yeah, no, nice price up there, but very early in the, the wagering. I did go with a horse that's getting some class relief, and that's the seven. Ha Penny Bridge is dropping to this $50,000 level, turning back today to a mile after making that middle mood last, last time out to uh, get the lead and tire to finish sixth. That was against Maiden Special Weight Competition. That was her career turf debut. It was going a mile in the 16th, and it was at the competitive Keeneland meeting. I just thought this horse uh, on the drop was the horse I was going to put on top of my ticket. A logical contender in and I see you also had it on the ticket. But the horse that's currently tepid favored right now is a horse you have in second, and that is the one miracle girl. 
Well, this one is also taking a bit of a class drop from the maiden special weight ranks. That is Miracle Girl from the Kathy Ritbo barn. This one angled out from off the pace, was a gaining fourth last time out in her first start for this barn. That was here, maiden special weight company on October 12th. Going to get some added distance today along with the class drop. That should suit her well, and she should be sharp because she turned in a bullet. Half mile move in 46 and 3 over at Gulfstream on October 29th. Well, let me tell you about the four Arara. This one I told you has the jockey change today to Antonio Gallardo. This is a late closing third against this caliber competition going seven and a half furlongs. That was back on September 3rd. Then drops after failing to, to fire when facing a horse that actually went into the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly Turf. Uh, that was Andrea's reward. That was in the $75,000 Our Dear Peggy last time out. I think this one sits the catbird seat behind the speed in this race. Keeping good company. I think this one can be on the board. Antonio Gallardo, good rider, does his uh, riding in the winter at Tampa Bay. Put this one on my ticket. Don't know what it is on the morning line. Six to one on the morning line. And Katie, uh, you closed it out with my seven. I also used the eight high heel. Going to wear blinkers. Broke from the rail last time out. Uh, go, go to, went up keenly, really, to dispute the pace in that race. And I think the blinkers today will help throttle down this horse's keen early inches. But might set it up for, you know, the horse that you have on top and for a horse like Rara if the speed does get uh, dicey on the front end. Well, you're getting a nice value on that one. 10 to 1 in the morning line with Edgar Zayas in the saddle. Now the leading rider here at Gulfstream Park West. So riding in excellent form right now. Yeah, he's got uh, Tyler Gaffleone by 1, 21 to 20. And we haven't said that Tyler Gaffleone is in the leading rider here in quite some time. So a fun, fun battle on the top of the jockey standings. Race number two today, five and a half furlongs. Claim is three and up, $6,250. A couple of scratches in here. Scratch the four, JC50. Also scratch Scratch number six, one for Don. Who was my top pick in here? I scratched into the seven, Pachanga Party. But I want to hear about the number five, Aquapalito. You know what? I had Acapulquito on top from the beginning, even without the scratch of one for Don, who I did have on my ticket, but I had him in second. This one, turning back to his preferred distance of five and a half furlongs today. After pressing the pace and tiring when going seven-eighths here on October 24th, throw that race out. It was just too far. Prior to that, he strung together a quartet of solid performances at this level. He's four for five in the money at the distance, and I just took the distance play of this race and thought this horse is best suited for it and put him on top. Yeah, my selections are wrong up there. I have the, the six is scratched. I have seven, two, and three, and I'll tell you about the number seven, Pachanga Party. This one, a previous winner at the distance, uh, turns back after returning from the layoff to stalk the early pace and fade to finish six against $6,250. These were open claimers uh, going uh, six furlongs, previous winner at the distance. Like I said, had one for Don at top of the ticket, scratched into the seven Pachanga party. Uh, I also used the two in here, Katie Rivershire, a winner of 50% of its races at this distance of five and a half furlongs, four starts, two wins, making his first start since facing tougher tougher at Tampa, but that was during the winter. Marcelo Navarro is the trainer. Jose A. Garcia atop this seven-year-old gelding who's working at a steady clip across town at Gulfstream in preparation for the return, but a little bit of a guess in here with the, the number two uh, River Shire on, uh, you know, the layoff. Yeah, seven months is a long time to be away. Definitely with this barn, do not count them out. I have them on the ticket. I have them in third, though. I think there are other horses that I'd be more comfortable with at the top of my ticket. Well, let's go to race number three this afternoon. This one, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. It's claim is three and up. Non-winners of two races in life. We do have some scratches in here of the number six, Darnell Spirit. The number eight, Akati's Ice. And the main track only participant, number nine, Clark Fe Cl Black Phoenix, excuse me, has been declared out of that race. And I think the uh, the one horse iPhone addiction is the logical one in here. Well, we're in complete agreement here in this race, Ron. iPhone addiction, a gelded son of Big Brown. Last time out returned from more than a two-month layoff. Finished second, only beaten a length at this level on October 18th for Oscar Gonzalez. His stalking style really suits the way that this turf course has been playing, and he should be fit our second start off the layoff. It also helps that he owns a previous win at this distance. He broke his maiden going a mile and a 16th back in June. Number three, El Canguro, is a stretching out that additional 16th of a mile today. After stalking the action last time out, rallying late to finish fourth, a neck and head behind the horse we were just talking about. That's I phone addiction last time out great name for a horse iphone addiction a lot of people do have iphone addictions in there right there right next to me right there so the number three and like katie said 
I added the number five, Modern Tail, because I actually had the uh, six horse on my ticket. But Modern Tail is dropping today to the $16,000 level. He is. And you know what? I had this horse on the ticket from the get-go. Cutting his tag nearly in half today off a seven-week freshening. This is going to be his debut at the mile and a 16th distance, which is why I had to drop him in in third. But he'd been holding his own at... A, similar competition level in his previous races and i think he should really be spotted well in this race against this kind of company and i think he might show a little bit more speed on the stretch out i don't know if that's going to help him in this spot the way the turf has been playing but i just thought from a class level he fit in well enough in this race to get a share yeah and he is the morning line favorite in this oh, race and he's trained surprising. by ron pellegrini he's 19 percent with the uh, dirt to turf move and one for three this horse is going to race with blinkers off this afternoon so uh, a logical choice for the number five i had originally left him off the ticket even though he was the morning line favorite did not uh, but now going back he looks like he's a logical choice in there to be somewhere let's go to race number four today one mile maiden claiming phillies two-year-olds sixteen thousand dollars jockey change on number two make the rider uh, apprentice winston k also a 10 pound apprentice so i believe the weight will stay the same in here and i will start it in here causeway jack because this is my best bet of the afternoon this one now in the giuseppe ayasadernia bond it's a daughter of giants causeway drops to the sixteen thousand dollar level with lasix added after a wide trip produced a six wide seven place finish but it was a productive maiden special weight race at Gulfstream in which the repeat winner Harlan's Darlin went on to finish second in the R. Dear Peggy Stakes and the second place finisher in that race above fashion went to Delta Downs and finished second in the $100,000 My Trusty Cat Stakes very interesting name for a horse, my trusty cat. But this horse keeping company with stakes competition, dropping to the $16,000 level and getting Lasix this afternoon. I love this filly. I love this filly in this spot. I completely agree with it being your best bet of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I think she's worth being a single in the Rainbow Six today with there only being eight races. It begins in race number three. So this is in the Rainbow Six sequence. And like you said, she's dropping majorly. Debuting in Maiden Special Weight Company. It was her career debut. Didn't show a lot of speed and she just got swallowed after, you know, breaking a little bit slowly from that gate. This is an excellent, excellent spot. And by Giants Causeway, out of an AP and D mare. She is bred top to bottom for the stretch out. Number six, let love a rule is stretching out around two turns today for the first time after rallying to finish second in consecutive races against similar competition going six and seven furlongs respectively. It's a daughter of Adios Charlie, uh, certainly bred to respond favorably to the added distance today. I'm actually not sold of the pedigree for routing, but you must respect her recent form. She's been running well, steady rally to get up for second last time out. Absolutely has a big shot in here. Yeah, and I just threw the four in there, Holy Treasure, third at this level in August, albeit uh, at five and a half furlongs, get some uh, needed class relief today. Let's go to race number five. We're back on the turf. It's one mile. Claimers, Phillies and Mayors, three and up. Non-winners of three races in life or three-year-olds, $8,000. Clean slate in here with nine runners, no scratches or jockey changes. So for sure, we will have one of the rolling super high five wagers in race number five today. And both Katie and I went with the number four, Kelly's Little Secret. In her turf debut, she was great last time out. She certainly was not a secret that day, and she won't be today. She's going to take a lot of money. She sat just off the pace, rallied for a length victory here on October 23rd. She's a perfect one-for-one one over this turf course and at this distance. Now going to look to make it two in a row. Well, I went with the E3 Greek Flower in second, who's stretching out to a mile again after making that five-wide bid to finish third behind Kelly's Little Secret. That was going seven and a half furlongs last time out. And note that uh, she She's three for five in the money on this course. She's had five races here with a win and two thirds. So she likes it here. She ran uh, pretty decently behind Kelly's Little Secret, who's making its turf debut. So I put it in second. You have the number eight wild card hit in second. I have it in third. We're pr basically in agreement. Wild card hit, uh, turning back today. Yes, and also seeking back-to-back -back victories. Rallied from five wide to score by a length and a quarter against non-winners of two. That was going a mile and a 16th on October 23rd. 
three for four in the money over this turf course. Stalking style also suits the way the turf course is, has been playing. But 0 for 8 at this distance, I think she might be better at a mile and a 16. Let's go to race number six today. And this is our final bet three of the afternoon. Race is six, seven, and eight. And we have nine runners in here. So the rolling super high fives will continue. This one is a one mile maiden special weight event. Phillies, two year olds. And we have, as I mentioned, no scratches in this race. Want to go back and show you the performance of the horse that both Katie and I have on top of our ticket. That's Determined Lady. Uh, this horse, third choice on the morning line. Uh, you know, got bumped at the start and had some trouble in this last race. She did. This is, you know, gets bumped around a little bit in this race. You're going to see her there as the horse to <laughs> her inside comes over and literally she just flies sideways <laughs> there. But you know what? She's going to rally on. She's going to actually get a piece of the purse here. She finishes third in this race. This is just going to be her third career start today. And I think her running style really suggests that she should relish the stretch out. Most remember her sire, Big Drama, as a sprinter. But you know what? He was a stakes winner at a mile and a 16th and graded stakes place as a mile and an eighth out of a lemon drop kid mare. She has got route ability in that pedigree for sure. Love her at this distance and training sharply. Number six, little Priscilla is making her first journey around two turns today. You look at her last race, she hesitated at the start. She showed some late run. That was a five and a half furlong debut, a race that produced a trio of next out winners from seven starters. So using the key race angle here, I think this horse is going to uh, like the stretch out. It's a daughter of Majestic Warrior. Certainly bred to handle the added real estate. So little Priscilla comes out of a key race, had an excuse early on, up there at six to one on the morning line. Horse you might want to put on your super high five ticket. It's ladies' day, at least in this race. You've got determined lady and you got proud lady, and I've got those two in an exacta here. Proud lady by insummation, going to return to the main track today following a third-place finish at seven and a half furlongs on the grass here on October 18th. The one and only time she went a mile on the main track, she was second to a very well-regarded Bill Kaplan trainee named Chief Attraction, who was only narrowly beaten here in an allowance a couple weeks ago. So I think she's been holding her own in good company and could be well spotted here. Well, tell me about the morning line favorite who I did not use, and that is the number two, Danessa, again. Well, this is actually a little bit of a gamble. Not sure I'm sold on her as the morning line favorite because it's her career debut. She's running for George Navarro today, 12 published workouts, but she did work well. A recent 5 eighths move in a minute and three here on October 26. It also helps that she's working here over this racetrack. And there's even a three quarter mile work in there, so she should be fit. We'll see. She's out of a stakes place mare, Cape Cod Lady. But again, first time starter, wouldn't take her as a favorite. Well, she's going to get bet because it's George Navarro, so we already know that. But his record with first time starters is not as good at horses that already have a start. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, let's go to race number seven now. And this one is one mile. It's on the turf. It's maiden claim is three and up, $35,000. Eight runners in the field, no scratches or jockey changes to report. Uh, Katie, both you and I have the number one. How you talking about George Navarro? This is horse. Let's go back and see this horse's performance at Mammoth Park on uh, August 30th. Much more comfortable betting George Navarro in this race <laughs> than in the previous race we just discussed. How you the one here in this field, the horse in front has the jump on him clearly, but rallies from off the pace to get second, only beat in a length and a quarter. I thought that was a solid effort, especially considering how much of an advantage the horse in front had in this race coming into the stretch. This is gonna be his first start since August, but I think he's gonna get blinkers added today that should help him be a little bit sharper, sit closer to the pace and not have quite as much work to do. Has been training sharply as well. When a bullet five eighths here on October 30th. Yeah, I mean, I like the workout pattern. Looks like that horse is sitting on a nice performance. Number four, Dispersion, is a $150,000 gelded son of Archie. Returned from a, an 11-month layoff to come within a scant nose of breaking his maiden here at this level and distance. I, I, I think he's an obvious choice, unless you might think he bounces off that performance right. and, and doesn't get the job done this afternoon. But certainly ran well. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he lost by this much, so why not uh, uh, You know, use him right back again at this level and distance. And uh, uh, nice breeding on him. 
Absolutely. I think he is certainly bred for this up and down by Arch out of a Mr. Greeley mare. And again, there's a little bit of a concern. Will he bounce off that huge of an effort off the layoff? That's why I couldn't quite put him on top, but he should definitely be somewhere on your ticket. Well, here's a horse that's a pretty nice uh, price on the morning line at 10 to 1, and that is congrats you. This one is dropping into the maiden claiming ranks after showing improved speed before weeding against maiden special weight competition last time out. What I like most of it's uh, Dave Gasson, Casson, the trainee, puts them where they belong. Uh, Jonathan Gonzalez handling the usually fruitful third start back from a layoff. One of the horses I think you might want to add on your uh, super high five ticket. Keeping the theme of layoffs, the seven Patrick Joseph. He's returning from a two month freshening today and also returning to the maiden claiming ranks after finishing third in maiden special weight competition. That was at Gulfstream back in September. The winner that day, though, Amigo, he just came back to win a state bred allowance here. So that race proving to be a bit of a key race as well. And he's going to get a break in the weights with apprentice Vicente Gudiel in the saddle. Well, let's go to our final race on the Wednesday card. It's a five furlong a turf event, and it's for Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds, and up $25,000. Uh, scratch the main track only, number 11 in here. So we will have a full field of 10 runners in here. Horse I did not use on my ticket, Katie. I'm interested to see what you have to say about uh, Little Snip, one of the videos you pointed out. Yeah, well, Little Snip had so much traffic trouble in her last start. Let's take a look back. This is from October 10th. Has to check at the start. You see the rider take up on her there. She completely loses room. Oh, look, it's the same thing. She's <laughs> checking again around the far turn. Repeatedly checked again, taken up again and again. I mean, <laughs> this is check number four. You would think this filly would absolutely say, OK, enough already. <laughs> I'm not running anymore. You want me to stop? I'll stop. But get this. She rallies for second and she's only beaten a neck. This was her career debut. What a valiant effort, a lot of tenacity. Look at her clothes. I mean, this is quite a kick here. After being taken up, she even drips in there, showing some greenness. After all of that, she's only beaten that margin. I'm going to take her today and hope she learned from that experience. Yeah, stepping up, that was against 12-5 maidens. Now she's going to try $25,000 maidens, but so it looks like she has a, a lot of heart in there, and she's a, a pretty square price on the morning line. I did go with the horse you have in second. That's Variety of Colors, debuting locally for trainer Jane Sabelli uh, at the $25,000 level after finishing second as the favorite in our Mammoth Park a turf finale against $35,000 maidens. That was going five and a half furlongs. It's a daughter of Indy Wynn and working solidly on the Palm Meadows turf course. I love that angle, and thus I put the number nine variety of colors. Certainly going to go back and look at Little Snip again. That horse was in more trouble than I usually am, and, and that's pretty good. I also use in here the one Blame Dixie. This is a $300,000 daughter of Blame, debuting locally for a $25,000 tag. Red flag uh, after showing speed and retreating when finishing uh, eighth against Maiden Special Weight Competition, going five and a half furlongs. Where? At the tough Saratoga meeting. Uh, Jonathan Thomas is the trainer. Jose Caraballo atop. What an interesting possibility this horse is. You know, dropping down. You don't know really what to make about it uh, on the board right now. Uh, well, actually, his second choice on the morning line at the 4 to one Who else did you use? Glass of wine. I am always up. I will always have a glass of wine. <laughs> this one is a Ken Tharos filly. Going to make her career debut in a very favorable spot for David Fox. Ten works. Love the pedigree. Ken Tharos. 32% with turf sprinters. That, I think, is just an incredible percentage for a sire. We've seen him do it with not only Can Do from the Ralph Nix barn locally, also Katie's Kiss for David Fox, a stable mate of this one. Four winning siblings in the pedigree, and Fox just had a similar success with a first-time starter at this level in Justice for All on the Friday night cap, so knows how to do it. Yeah, and uh, Cantharo's second year sire have been very, very impressive. You know, for a Florida bred sire, really, really good. Number three, Fly Me to Dubai, is making a career turf debut after a trio of third place finishes against similar. That was going three quarters of a mile or six furlongs on the main.
main track. It's a daughter of Into Mischief, and I think this horse can handle the surface switch today. And what I like about this horse is the consistency. And I'm not talking about this horse being on top of the ticket, but as we've been mentioning throughout this analysis that, that we have the rolling super high fives, I think a horse like this you throw somewhere on the ticket. He's up there at a square price, and uh, I just think that she's up there at a square price. And maybe someone you want to put on that, uh, you know, ticket because you got to have the first five finishes to win. Absolutely. And if you're getting Edgar Zayas and Gustavo Delgado at 8-1, to one, that's something that is just worth putting some money on regardless. Well, a fun card today. Eight races, as we mentioned. we got the Rainbow Six with about $16,000 in that pool. Starting in race number three with this eight-race card. Fast main track for a turf course. It's a beautiful day. I'm loving the breeze right now. Just soaking it in, really. Got to be here. Going to be another fun day of racing.